Google Classroom is the perfect free tool for organizing learning material for your class, club, or workshop. While it's very popular in K-12 schools, you can use Google Classroom for nearly any learning experience. Let me help you create your first class and begin organizing your resources. Hi, my name is John Silwash. I help teachers and students use Google tools in the classroom. To get started, you are going to need three things. Number one, you as the teacher will need a Google account to create your course. Secondly, you'll need some kind of device. You can use a laptop, Mac, PC, or Chromebook, or you can also create your class using a mobile device. The third thing you will need is you just need to be aware that your students will need Google accounts in order to join your class. Now, Google Classroom is available for all types of Google accounts, whether personal Gmail accounts or Google Workspace for business and education. There are some restrictions on what you can do with those different types of accounts. For example, you really aren't supposed to be running classes with underage students using a personal Gmail account. For that, you really need to use a Google Workspace for Education account that's managed by your school. You can work with your IT department to get that set up, but you need to be aware of those important things before we get started. Let's create our first class. Visit classroom.google.com and sign into your Google account. If you see a question that asks if you are a teacher or a student, go ahead and click teacher. If you don't get that question, don't worry about it. We're going to go up in the top right corner of the screen where you'll see this plus button and we'll look for create class. If you don't see this create class option, you'll need to talk to your IT department and ask them to give you teacher permissions so that you can begin creating your own classes. The only field that's required is class name. Now, in addition to the name of your class, I would recommend that you type in the date or the semester, something like winter, 2025. The rest of the fields are optional. You can fill them in if you wish. Click create and you've got a class. It's really that easy. We're going to spend just a minute setting this up and customizing it. You can go ahead and customize the banner that appears at the top of the screen. This will allow you to pick a cover photo and your theme color. You can even use a tool like Canva to design your own. And that's it. You've got your class. Next up, we're gonna look at how to add content to your brand new course. Right now, we are looking at the stream area of Google Classroom. This is where you can post announcements to your students. Let's go ahead and do a sample here, post in my announcement, and you're gonna see similar tools all throughout Google Classroom, you know, text formatting, the ability to add emojis, and then some common icons down here, attach something from Drive, attach a YouTube video, upload a file, link, uh, and more. Let me go ahead and add a file. Um, just add an image to this post. I'm gonna just pull that in from my download folder. And we'll post that so you can kind of get a sense of uh, what this would look like. Now I can post this right now if I want. I can also schedule this announcement for a later date or save it as a draft. Let me go ahead and post it. And there we go. That's our first announcement in the course. Students can comment on this. Um, I'll look at the settings where you can turn this feature on and off as you wish. The stream is where you'll post announcements. I'm going to head over to the classwork page, which is where we're going to begin posting assignments in our course. There's nothing on the classwork page yet. We're about to change that. I'm going to click the create button and let's start with a material post. This is a resource for my students. It's not something they need to do or turn in. It's just a, a reference material. Probably the most common thing to add to your class first is your syllabus. Now, my syllabus is in my Google Drive account, and that's one of the great things about Google Classroom is its tight integration with all the other Google services such as Docs, Slides, Google Meet, and more. I'm going to click on the Drive button. This is going to open up my Google Drive, and here's my syllabus that I have ready to go. I'll go ahead and post that to the class, and it'll be visible to them as soon as they sign in.
Let's go ahead and add a discussion question to kick off our class. So I'm going to hit the create button once again. And this time I'm going to go down to question. Now this is a pretty classic you know, type of uh, assignment. Allows me to ask either a multiple choice or a free response question for my students to engage with. So I'll put my question up here. And if I have any additional information, instructions, I could put that down below. This would be like typing complete sentences. Your response should be three to five sentences, you know, things like that. You can add all those attachments we looked at earlier. I don't need that right now. I'm just going to post this as a short answer question. Um, I can change it to multiple choice if I want. Now, over on the right side are some important different options. This is where we can schedule a due date. Um, and due dates are really helpful because it will automatically send reminders to students as that due date approaches. If I want, I can close this assignment so that they cannot submit after that due date. Um, and there's a few other options that uh, we'll look at as well. 100 points seems a little extreme for this. Let's change that to 10 points. We'll look at the grade book a little bit later. Like my announcement from earlier, I can either post this right now or schedule it for a later date. I'll go ahead and schedule this to post tomorrow. So we've added a reference material, our syllabus. We've added a discussion question. The third thing that we're going to add is an actual assignment. And this is probably the most common type of thing that you'll add to Google Classroom and also the most versatile and flexible. So that's that first one there. We'll click on assignment. So during my first week, students are going to be taking some notes on the scientific method. So I'm going to post my instructions there, I'll call this the scientific method. And I am also going to attach a file from Google Drive. This is also a Google document, but you can see it could be a presentation um, or anything. So I'll go ahead and attach that. Now here's where things are a little bit different. Because this is an assignment, students are going to be interacting with this document that I've added. So I have three choices that you'll see. I can either give my students view only access, I can allow them to edit my original file, or I can instruct Google Classroom to make a unique copy of each uh, of this file for each of my students. In my case, I'm going to select that third one. I want everybody to have their own copy. And they can edit and submit that. We've got the same options over on the right in terms of you know, grades and due date. That all looks good. And I'll go ahead and post that. So we've got three assignments here in Google Classroom. We have a reference um, post, a discussion question, and an activity. And you'll continue this process over and over throughout your course. Eventually, you may have dozens or even hundreds of different activities, which is why you can also add topics. Topics are essentially folders that allow you to organize all of your resources into categories. So I just added a unit one topic, and all I have to do is just drag these down and drop them into unit one. Google Classroom is your home page. You can integrate and link Google Classroom to literally anything that you can imagine. If you're running a virtual course, you can drop your Zoom or Google Meet link right into Classroom to make it easy for students to join your live classes. If you have favorite learning tools like Quizlet, Edpuzzle, or anything else, you can simply add links to those services as well. All of your files are stored safely in Google Drive. When you attach something to your class, it automatically goes into a folder in Drive. This also organizes your students' resources as well. Anything with a due date goes on the class calendar and Classroom automatically sends reminders to students about their upcoming and missing assignments. Google Classroom is an absolutely an amazing way to organize all of your class resources into one central location. Let's take a deeper look at some of the settings to customize and configure your class. In my class, I'm going to click up in the top right corner of the screen on what I call the fidget spinner. Top right corner, click on that gear. These are the settings for your class. Now, we already went through and added our class name. You can modify that at any time if you wish. We'll talk about inviting students in just a minute, but let's go ahead and look at this first section here, stream and classwork. 
If you don't want students to be able to post announcements to your stream page, you can turn that off here. Most teachers will change this so that only the teacher can post and comment. I recommend for this second section that you select hide notifications. This will hide your assignments from your announcement page. I like to keep them separate. Guardian Access is a feature that allows parents to receive progress reports about their students' academic assignments. It's important to note that parents can't actually get into Google Classroom. It's just going to send them an email summary showing what students the work has completed, what work they have upcoming, and if they have any missing assignments. If you're running virtual meetings, you can integrate Google Meet with your course. This is not on by default, but literally all you have to do is click generate meet link and that will add a virtual meeting link to your class. You can turn it on and off based on how often you meet in your classroom. The last thing we'll look at here are your gradebook settings. And there's a bunch of different options that may or may not be useful to you. Some teachers add grades to Google Classroom. Other teachers don't. They just provide feedback and then they'll enter the grades into the official school gradebook. You do whatever is comfortable for you. You can turn this off entirely by turning off um, the show overall grade to students option. You can also create weighted categories if you want, if you have different things like classwork, homework, and projects. This is all up to you. You can configure this however you wish. It's time to add our students. I'm going to exit the class settings page and head back to the stream. On this page, you can see your class code. It's going to be down kind of in the middle of the screen. This code is unique to your class, and giving this code to your students is the easiest way for them to get enrolled into your course. I typically just write my class code up on my whiteboard, or we can just project it full screen and invite them to visit classroom.google.com. Click that plus button up in the top right corner, just like you did, and say join class. Now, just as a reminder, all students must have a Google account in order to access Google Classroom. Typically, this is going to be a Google Workspace for Education account provided by your school. If you wanted some other alternative options, you can also email a class invite link to your students. That's an easy way to do it. They simply click the link and it adds them in. And then the final way is by going to your class roster and adding students manually. This is what I will typically do if I have a student who joins my class you know, midway through the year. So I just clicked on the People tab, so where my students would show up. And I'm going to click this Add Student button over here and simply type in the student's name. And that's it. They'll get an invitation. If you have other teachers who you work with through this course, you can also invite them as co-teachers. On the top of this page, this is where you'll see your teacher section. Right now it's just me, but I can click the plus button and add a secondary teacher if I want as well. The secondary teachers can see the students, the assignments, they can add content to your course. The only thing a co-teacher cannot do is delete the course. Congratulations, you have a fully functioning course. You are ready to teach your class, club, or workshop. Now, this was an introduction to Google Classroom, but there is so much more that you can do. I wanna encourage you to check out the playlist that I'll display on the screen that includes videos on working with rubrics, doing project-based learning, creating student groups, using Google Meet with Google Classroom, and many creative project ideas. I hope you'll use Google Classroom for many years and become a Google Classroom expert. It's a great way to organize your course.